Okay, I think we got it. Give me a second. Give me a second. Dave here, how are you? And I hope the stream is coming through well. This is, YouTube has created this new thing called Studio and we used to be running on a thing called Classic. And now I'm struggling learning this. I may do a couple of test five minute shows during the week and see how they, see how it goes. <laughs> Especially for an old guy. The reason they've done it, as I was saying in the chat before, was People that want to do a live stream with something like this, it's super easy for them. Click, 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 and away they go. But for me, where I'm setting up and I want to bring in videos and show you pictures of things that are happening as well, it's a little awkward uh, for me to do it all in here. I'm so much more at home using the computer. Um, okay, so I'm going to try and put a quick post out there, and hopefully that'll work as well. Finishing that up. All right. I hope you've had a great week. Um, what do we got? What do we got? Everything's working well. Excellent. Uh, and I'm hoping that the links that I put on Facebook on the different pages also worked. If you can let me know, that'd be terrific. All right. Today, 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 we're going to read this bloody float. <laughs> Here we go. Um, Jasmine's bench seat. Now, my eldest daughter has just bought an old home in Sydney and her and her husband are renovating it, and they've done a nice paved area out the back. It's an old confederation kind of style home. And she's found an old table out on the street, and she thought, you know what, I might make a couple of benches. And this is her first attempt at woodwork. woodwork. And let's throw this up so you can have a quick look. That's the table she found. And then this is the, the seats that she made are underneath. The boards she got back to me said, Dave, maybe, Maybe uh, I should have screwed all of the ends first and then put spaces between the boards in the middle and put a clamp on it before I screwed those up. So I think she's done a fantastic job. What do you reckon? You know, not bad. Uh, considering that she, she's never done woodwork in her life before, so she, and this is a great thing. I love to encourage people to just jump in and have a go. Uh, better than perfect video, Dave, in New Jersey. Okay, excellent. All good there, Cole, terrific. Um, Facebook post, all good. Thank you very much for letting me know that again. The Tongue Drum Project, day two. I'm going to build it slightly differently. I'm going to build it in a more complicated manner than what the article in the Australian Woodsmith told me to. They said to do mitered corners on all of the box. I'm going to use Cole's Gifkin's jig to create a really solid corner. But the downside of that is I can't create a rebate all the way around the bottom using a dado stack on the table saw. You, the reason they want a, a rebate around the bottom is so that you can push the soundboard up inside into a rebate. Now, I'll do a rebate, but I'll use a rebate cutter and a router once the box finished so I can go around the inside and then push the soundboard in that way. So we're gonna cheat a little bit. Now, the other thing is, while I'm going through this, dovetails and setup of the Gifkin's jig. So Cole sent me down the next set of uh, this guy here, this thing here. It's a bigger template for the three quarter inch. Uh, do let us go in the dark. They probably will. I'm not going to turn it off and have a go in here. I've noticed that the, uh, the thinner that the resin's poured, the better it glows. Now go figure. So also the, the larger cutters, this is for the dovetails and the straight cutter is for the pins. So it's, it's a little bit of mucking around, but I'll tell you what, once you've got your head around it, the joints are absolutely perfect. Um, Matt's Melamine desk progress as well. I'll show you some photos of the stuff. He's put cupboards up on the wall and we'll talk through that during the rest of the show. All right, what have we got? Now you wanted to know about the glow in the dark. These are 
the resins that I had left over. Now something very scary happened. The next morning before I ducked into work, I dropped down into the shed here to have a look. It was all still very, very wet. I could tip the board and all the resin was flowing still. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, did I put one to one or did I do two hardeners to one resin or something? What is going on here? But there was not one bubble in here. G'day Kando, how are you? Now, they are rock hard. The second day, they can still move a little bit. Um, by Friday, they were pretty hard. I could do a little scratch with my thumbnail on them. Saturday is when I started doing the processing. So I'm going to show you now. I took some video of, of this part. So let me see if I can find that for you. Now, I've killed the sound in the video too, so you don't have to worry about turning the sound down. I'll talk you through it. Here we go. This is through the thicknesser. Now, the reason I put it through the thicknesser, and I put it through it very, very shallow passes. I'm going to just show you a few of the passes. The reason I put it through the thicknesser was because there was a slight cup in the board developed. Now, if I put it on the CNC, it would have taken off a heap at one end and not much in the middle and a heap at the other end. So going through the CNC it was all it sorry going through the thickness planer all it does is replicate what is on the underneath side. So this is, I think this is the last pass, and you can see I've taken off all of the um, the residue that was the overspill. No, this is the last pass, and going down to get rid of any of the stain that the resin had left soaking in. Next thing to do was to put it through the drum sander, and this is 60 grit paper. This is cleaning the, up a little bit more. The thickness planer does cuts every sixteenth of an inch. Um, this is probably 120 or 180. It took it down to be nice and fine with that. G'day Matteo, how are you? So you can see it's coming up a little bit cleaner. And I was quite happy with that. So then I needed to rip it down to width. So I put it through the table saw, remembering that I had all of the parts still in the one board. So the four, four sides of the box were all in this one piece. And now over the jointer for the bottom of the board. I think I took around about a millimetre off in this one pass. Being careful to keep my fingers away. And then cutting it to length, I turned the lasers on on the capex. I was lining up with the little slots that the CNC had left for me. I always do a small cut on the top to cut the fibers, and then I go deep so that there's minimal, minimal tear out. Just checking that I've got the dust extraction pulling from underneath. That saw has also got another dust port underneath it, as well as the overhead connect um, dust port that it has. Um, it's deep cast. If you have a look in the uh, in the description box below, did the resin build up on the thickness of blades? Not that I know of, Wayne. If you have a look at below where it says show more below the video, you'll see that it, uh, let me see. You'll see in the description it says show more below the video, and I have all the links there. So if you go into the Carbotech link, I think it is, I think I might have a, re a link for the resin there. If not, just go into Carbotech via those links. It's an affiliate link. You're helping the show out if you do. And thank you so much to everyone who is using the affiliate links. Even if you go in with that affiliate link and then do your shopping, like if you go and buy a thicknesser or a table saw or whatever in there, the show gets a benefit. It's not going to cost you any more. It's just helping me out, which then I can in turn help you guys out by bringing the show to you. All right. The next thing, the next thing, the next thing. I'm looking down the side here. Oh, during the week, if you're interested about the resins a little bit, um, we did a, at work, we did a pour with the neon resins. Now, this is glow in the dark resin. We did one with the neon resins. And we wanted to show it so that on one board on a, with a piece of timber down the middle and there was 11 or 12 different types of resin, of different colors. So on the CNC, we milled a piece of MDF that had six holes in it to hold plastic cups like this with the different colors in it. And the whole thing was to be able to pour it out all in one go. So I'll show you that. 
So we had a couple of the guys down there. Okay, uh, give me a second. The right hand side there. We're all good. The left line middle. Okay, yeah, line her up. The, the resins and pouring it out in one go into the mold. So that's an interesting way to do it. Good morning, Ebony. How's it going? Lift her up. That's, that's too, too perfect. <laughs> Too perfect? Yeah, it's too straight. It's Let's have a look. No, with the ridges, it's, 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 it does bubble a lot and yeah. does get warm, but with the deep, that's pretty cool. Deep cast, it doesn't, it doesn't get warm at all. Now remember last week when I poured these in and I did all the pour out, and this was sitting there, and I said, yeah, I feel it's. You saw me hesitating about saying whether it was warm or not. It wasn't. It did not get warm at all. And I reckon that's the reason because it can pour at 50 millimeters thick in one pour. It doesn't get hot, doesn't bubble. There's very little to actually use a, um, a little reason to use a torch to, to heat the bubbles up. Although I did do it a little bit. Now here's, this is the section that's done in the purple glow in the dark after I've done the, the pour and put it through the thickness. So I waited a week. Now. You'll see also I have a face mark there. I don't know if you can see it. It's a very fine line that does this. So that tells me my face and my edge. They're my references. Now also you might see on this one I've got B and C. The reason I do those is when I put the, all the boards in a line, I'll show you now, make it a bit easier. I'll get the rest of them down. So you can see my ends, A and B. So B and B are there. And you can see that's the flow of the timber. That's how the board is. So all the way around, except for the last joint, which is A, oh, sorry, uh, maybe it's D and A. We'll, we'll have a look at that, or D and D, I should say. Um, so I'm going to lay them out here so you can see them. A, yeah, it's D and D. Now, I don't know if you can see all of that or not. I'll push it back this way. Um, go to the other camera, maybe. I'll have a quick look over on the other side. Um, that might be better. Okay. Now you can see I've got side, end, side, and end. All of this is the timber as I cut it out. So I always write A, A, B, B, C, C, D, and D. That means that when the job goes together, when I push it like that, that is going to have a wraparound effect as far as the timber is concerned. So if this had grain more than just having this panel board, um, it would be absolutely perfect. This one's going to go down this side, and this other one's going to go at the end. I'll pull that together a bit so you can see it rotating around and a bit more. Whoop. And of course, it's all going to fall apart. <laughs> now, that's that part. Next thing to do is to have a look at the joint and the jig. I'll switch back to this one. Uh, where are we? I was just quickly reading. All right. Now with the jig, it has shims. In here, whoop, wrong camera. <laughs> Sorry, Cole. Just here, there are shims. Those white things there. Let me see if I've got any in this box. Yes, there they are. Okay. The shims are a quarter of a millimeter thick, and it's just this stuff. Got the holes in the ends, and I think you get about 10 or so shims, maybe a bit more, with the with the kit from Cole. So there you go. Links in the description box down below. If you're interested. You can watch how it goes, you might turn around and say, no, I don't want it. But you see how easy it works and how nice, and you'll you'll turn around and want one. Um, so the shims go on one side only. They go on the straight cutter side. Now, every time you put a shim in or remove it, you're adjusting 
the tightness or the looseness of the joint by 0 0.08 of a millimeter. Okay, see you later, Ian. Just reading what's happening there in the, in the background. Now, to give you an indication of how, how nice and easy this jig is to adjust, I, the first one I did, and remember, did you remember 250 GSM card? Okay. Do you remember the first um, dovetail that I did on my own without Col here? It was a little tight and Col actually roused on me. He said, oh, you should have adjusted it. And I thought he was being a bit of an old woman about it. But now that I've done it myself and actually slowed down a little bit, it's, it's, it's really is important. Now this, you see I've got tight and loose. This is the dovetail. This is the pin because the pin goes into the dovetail. This is tight. Now I can't push it in much further. I could hit it with a hammer and it'd go in. But the thing is if I've got a joint that's maybe this wide, I'm really asking for trouble and I'll probably end up splitting the timber. Then I put in uh, two more shims or, or maybe three more shims. Anyway, I put in a couple of them. I thought, you know, I'll jump ahead. Um, did the joint, and that went in really easily. And I thought, wow, what a nice joint. Then I looked at it a little bit stronger, you know, a bit more of a micrometer eyes, and I realized it could do this, watch. It's wobbling. You can hear it. Now, Cole would look at that and he said, do it again. <laughs> so, pulled it out, and I did. I took one shim out. And you can see it's got perfect written on it. You watch this. That is a beautiful push fit. Turn it up that way so it says perfect. What do you think of that? There is no wobble. There's no movement. So if you spend a tiny, tiny little bit of time, all that took me about five minutes. What I had, when you saw when I ripped the edge off the board, I was working with exactly the same thickness, and I cut these little pieces over at the capex and just slowly went through it, one after the other, one after the other, and magic, absolutely beautiful. I was very impressed. Um, I must tell you that Cole was panicking. <laughs> he was saying, Dave, call me, call me, call me, any, any, any time you get something that's not quite right, you could make sure you call me. Well, I did, just to tell him how nice it was. All right. Now, you'll also remember that Cole talked about having working from the right, from the, um, the red side first. You always put your face mark. So that's my, see my face mark is just touching there. I will be putting that one on there. And there's one other thing that I'm going to do. Because a dovetail is a mechanical joint, it's not like a box joint. Box joints pull together like this. Okay, so both that side and that side are pulling tight into the joint. With a dovetail, it's only going to go one way. That's it. It's, it can't move up and down because of the angle. Think about that for a sec. Found that the perfect fit can be different depending on the species of timber you're using. Okay. Uh, Russell, you've got it as well. Keep a record of the species and the type of number of shims. Look, this is all fantastic information that's coming down here on the side. I and mean, that's one of the reasons why I leave the chat embedded into the video. So you can come back and have a look at what I'm saying. And if I've got it slightly wrong, don't worry. These, <laughs> these guys are going to criticize me and put me back on the straight and narrow. All right. So I did say I'm going to do the pins are going to go on my short ends, not on my long ends. The dovetails are going to go on the long ends. The reason being, I want to use these little guys to pull it together. So I'll put one on the top, I'll bring it up a little bit higher, one there and one at the other end of the box. I don't need to put any clamps along the box. You know, why, why use the longer clamps? And I don't want to apply too much pressure. That's why I'm using these. These are a light duty clamp. Very, very nice clamp and do. So that's how I'm going to do it. The other thing is, um, 
I've, I've got a brand new spoil board on the back. Now, if you're going to do a series of dovetails, and they're all going to be, you're not going to move the jig around, you're not going to move your positions around here at all, you're going to do a whole heap that are all the same size, you're fine with the one spoil board. When you change, spin the spoil board, take it off, rotate it 180 degrees and drop it back in. You've got a second go. Do the same on the other side as well. Then all it is, is that 12 mil MDF coal in there. Coal will let you know on the side. It's, it's not expensive. Yeah, just go and buy some and away you go. Good morning, John. Good morning, John. Now, I'm going to put the dovetail cutter in first into the router. So I'm going to go to the other camera so you can see how I'm going to do it. Switch cameras to this one. So I'm up in the corner just there and you can see what's happening down here. The cutters that Cole gives you have a spring. That spring there. Now don't push it down into the collet or the chuck and compress the spring. Just put it in until it sits. It's all been made specifically for these cutters. That is just in case that collar that stops the bearing moving around, that collar is going to stay in position. If it comes loose, it's still going to have the pressure on it so you're not going to stuff up the joint. Now you may also see that I have taken the router lift out and I've put the Craig plate back in. Now the reason being I was using this. Now with the smaller cutters it was fine, not a problem. But when I went to these bigger cutters I noticed I was getting a little bit more vibration and I wasn't really happy about that. So when you have this and this in that you can see the amount of leverage that you've got on the router. Now the bearings in the router are only about that far apart and because a Triton router has all this stuff where you have to raise it all the way up to lock it. Now I'm going to show you what I mean. And the router is disabled at the moment. So I'll raise it up. And it'll lock there. See that? Now I can undo and all that stuff there. It, it kind of, it's kind of counterproductive having a Triton router in the Carbotech lift. If I had another router that was a soft start, It'll be straight in because it can come up to the top and you can use two spanners above. But this was, I was having, I was doubling up on everything all over the place. So I decided it might be better if I leave it out. So now I'm going to put that cutter in there. And notice I didn't push it down, even though it can go down, I'm not going to. It's just going to sit there. I'm going to tighten the cutter up because it's got a pin that engages and locks the router head in place. It can't turn. I'm going to lower it down and now you can see it can turn. I'm going to take it down and use this. Now this is a packer. It's a spacer. It's the same thickness as the plate over here. See that? Actually it's just a touch under but it's this is your, your spacer that you put there. I'm going to be cutting this Sorry, I'm going to be cutting into this. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm putting the dovetails in this, the pins in this. So then the one the pins are going into, I'm going to put there and lower it down until I'm about half a millimeter above. Now, my router is totally disabled. See this? If this is not in the switch, it's a mechanical lock. It, it can't start. I'm going to come down a little bit more and Cole said about half a millimeter above which is where I am now. Okay, that's pretty good. Now at that height I'm going to lock the router in position. And I can't move it one way or the other with the lift. That's all good. Checking it's still the same height. Perfect. Take that out. And move that over there. All right, how am I going so far, Cole? Um, uh, 
Let me have a look here. Good news, Captain. Really good. All oh, right. Sorry about the, uh, that bad news that you had there. Uh, off the vent is always no ventilator. Yeah, ventilators are an interesting thing. Now, I don't know if you can see, just here, I've screwed 30 millimeter or 25 millimeter low frequency um, foam to the inside of this cabinet. So it's nice and quiet. It really is nice. Okay, let's keep going. Because I want to get this done before the end of the show. Move things away. Focusing on where I'm at. Now the next thing. It says here, dovetail cutter this side, straight cutter this side. So we need to go on the dovetail cutter, which is in there. And it's a funny thing because these are a straight parallel section. You'd think because these are tapered, that that's the dovetail, but it's not. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to go in there and I'm going to go across the face ever so slowly. I've got my uh, fence on here as well now, so it's got the dust port on there. So when I turn the dust extraction, I'm going to be pulling from there and straight down. This whole thing straddles this. I don't really need to have that in there, but I'm going to because, you know, why not? I'm going to set it up in the middle and I'm going to set it up with my face mark to the red side. So I don't have any pressure on anything at the moment. And I'm just doing this by eye, lining that up. I'm going to bring this back and equal pressure. I'm not going to push hard. Let me show you here. I'm not going to push hard on the back because I don't want to distort this at all. Because if I do, when I put the other piece in the other side, it's not going to fit very well. So I need to just go in evenly about there and tighten that up. And I'm going to put a clamp on. Emily, hi Wayne, Tippo, both well. Clearing up at the top and still. Does the height adjustment plate come with the jig? You made one. Um, I'm not sh sure. Let me think about that. Height adjustment plate for what? I'm going to put that in there come back a little. That means before long I can get my get on with my router table build using the Triton router. They've convinced me it was the right choice for my needs. It's been sitting in the box waiting since July 7, 8th. It's a great, the Triton router is a great router. While I'm putting this on, I need to make sure that I'm all the way down against the, the template here. So now I'm going to slide the other one up. See, it's pretty easy, isn't it? And just push on that side and tighten it. Get another little Bessie clamp. I'm going good. Thanks, Cole. <laughs> to measure the height of the cutter. Oh, Cole, you can answer that. Okay, so pull these up. Nice and tight. And you can see the face mark is pointing to the red end. And this is what Cole was very uh, adamant about. <laughs> okay, so that's all good. I think that's all tight. I'm going to put the yellow thing back in the switch down here. I'm going to put the eye muffs on because when you're using a machine, you know. Uh, All good. Turn the dusty on. Check that it's pulling. Yes, it's pulling from both sides. Now, I'm going to go ever so slowly across from right to left, okay? This is a router. It will make a little bit of noise. It may not be enough to warrant turning the sound down, but just have your finger beside the control just in case. Not always just a discretionary thing I do sometimes. Okay. All right, here we go. We're going to turn her on. Beautiful. And going slowly. I 
across it. And a cleaning pass in there as well. I'm going to go into this one. Okay, that's two. I'm going very slowly. Let's have a look. How clean is that? That didn't take too long. <laughs> that is very, very nice. You notice when I was doing this cut that there was some little flakes of resin coming out that was embedded down there. That's pretty cool. All right, I've done that. I'm going to end for end it and drop it straight back in to the jig, making sure there's no rubbish down there. <sighs> or on the back. Clamp. Now I'm not going to talk as much doing this part. I'll just hook in and do it. I'm going to make the thing go a little bit faster this time as well. Checking again. That's all good. Move that over. Turn the dusty on. There we go. And I'm going to aim it more that direction so that the, it's going out that way rather than over here. Here we go. Okay, so that's the dovetails both sides, both ends on that board. Do the next one. Remember, the timber's got to be parallel all the way around the box. Good, okay. So that's all good. Face this way, push that in there. Start her up again.
checking again across the bottom. That's all looking good. Last of the duck tires. I'm stopping it for just a second there. The reason being, see how I'm holding it? I'm holding it here. Don't be tempted to hold it freestyle without any contact onto the bench. If that router grabs, you've got a whole lot more control as a brake there. See that? If, then if I, that happened. Very important. for that to stop. Nice sharp cutter. Turn that off. Take this guy out and I put it up there so I know where <laughs> so I know where it is. Okay, let me have a quick read. Um, uh, Captain, I, I designed my router table model bench around Dave's MFT style work server started getting parts together months ago, not sure if I'll film the build, but should be getting started soon. That's why clamps take the place of fingers. All right, we'll take that out, take that off, and this one off. That's the two sides of the box. How nice is that? Look at that. It's gonna be beautiful when it's done. Um, right, and there's just magic. Pop that over there. Now we're going to take the dovetail cutter out and put the straight cutter in. Move that over here. Have a quick drink. How's everyone doing? YouTube, I said that at the beginning of the show. I'll talk about it again in a second. Um, where am I? Looking for the winder. It's over here, of course. And down into there, open the box up, release the lock. See how it moved then? The, um, there you go. I love it. <laughs> All right, that's locked. Okay, so the spring, you're asking about the spring, what's it there for? If for any reason the collar under the bearing comes loose. The spring is the safety belt that's going to keep it connected. Okay, so yes it is Captain Ken. Have a look. <laughs> Thanks Stephen. Um, Captain Ken, have a look in the description box below this video. If you've got a phone, have a look after it. If you've got a desktop computer, below the video, if you minimize the video a little bit, where it says um, show more, click that and all the links are there. And there'll be also be a link to Cole's site. I'm not an affiliation with Cole, he's just a nice guy. So I do this, out it comes. How cool is that? <laughs> all right, now we're gonna put the straight cutter in. How are we doing for time? 11.43 and drop it down until it touches the spring. Don't push it down, just drop it down onto the spring. Like that, they've been built specifically for coal. <clears throat> nice and tight. Just gonna move this over the back for the moment and over there and wind it down. Use the packer and this, because this is the part that the pins are going to go into. So we're gonna be cutting the pins 
So we've got to have the thickness of this. If these were different height thicknesses, that's when this part would really come into play. Where are we? About half a mil. And because all this timber has been machined through my thicknesser and drum sander, it's all parallel. About there. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And lock it from underneath. Beautiful. Take that out. Over here. Close this. Move that out of the way. All right. Now, instead of being here on the dovetail side, we need to turn the jig around. Very important. So now our red stop is going to be on my right hand side. Okay? Red on my right. Now, so we need the face mark pointing to the red side. Okay? And the clamps into there. I'm pushing down before I put all the pressure on. I may even shorten this video up a little bit and make a dedicated video out of it specifically for using this jig, if anyone's interested. Anyone else live chat stopped working about 20 minutes into the show in portrait but works in landscape beside video? Good thinking, BG. Now it looks like we need a Gifkin's jig because the Belladonia jig we've been borrowing and given a uh, bloody nightmare to set up. Cole will like you saying that, but <laughs> Ben. G'day, Sean. How are you? All right, I must back on. And I think I've got everything right there, Cole. We're cutting now the pins. So that's a tapered section on the jig, on the template, but a straight cutter. Don't get confused and don't have the dovetail cutter when you're using those tapered sections. It's easy to get confused. Just don't stop, slow down, think about what's happening. All right, I can turn that on. And it's staying there, which is nice. Now this one, I have to work very slowly across the face. I'm going to do the end one first. Notice I'm working right to left. And I'm going to do this until I'm past the center of the cutter. Okay, now I can go all the way in, into the template. That's what that is there for. Again, very slowly. Across the face. Stop there a second.
because I want to test it. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so that's, they're the pins. So it's B to B. This is that joint there. Let's have a look. I'll turn it around so you can see what's happening. What's going on there? Down. It's just a little tight. But you can see it's lining up beautifully. Now in that situation, it's going to, when I hit it together, it's, it's going to be fine. I'm not going to force it at this stage. But taking it apart, you pull it this way. So in that situation, Cole, you might be able to jump in there. You know, if it is a little bit tight, is there a way of adjusting it whilst we've still got the jig in position and haven't moved these at all? I'm just wondering about that. Don't know. So I'm going to keep on going because it'll go in. It's not a problem. I'm just asking the question. Everything lined up beautifully. Add a couple of shims. Okay, I will. For this side, Cole. Now the question is, yeah, I'll do that now. I'll do that right way. This is, this is a learning thing for me as well. So let's go in, I'll take these off, and so I don't need to worry about losing this position because I can undo those screws, um, and if I undo those from the bottom, I can slide that out that way. Would that be the best thing, Cole? You let me know. I don't really want to go mucking around with it too much at this stage. Let me have another look at that, B on B. That is a little bit too tight. It looks magic though. Very, very nice. I wonder why. That'll See, that'll pull together, not a problem. Yeah, take the end cap off and slide in a few shims. Okay, the end cap, if I take, so, oh, this cap, oh right, okay, here. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, that's, that's great. Let's do that. All right, so I'm going to undo this. How good is this? These are the kind of things that if it happens during a live demo, you're going to remember them straight away. Just take one end off and stick in two shims. I will, Martin, thank you. That's what Cole was saying. The reason being, I don't want to lose this registration here. So I'm going to undo these. Now, Cole, could that be because that timber may have expanded overnight after it was machined yesterday? So here we go. We're going to move that out and slide in two shims. Where are my shims? Uh, where's the box, Dave? Oh, right behind me, of course. <laughs> We're going to go over today, so I don't care. If you want to keep watching, that's fine. So two shims, you reckon, Cole? There's two shims, just like so. We're going to slide those in behind. Like so. Push those in. Oh, I'm loving it. That one there and this one here.
this one. Now I'm guessing this is why we do the dovetails first before we do the pins. So if you do need to do any adjustments on the fly, it's all happening. It's all good. How good is this? Um, how good is having the inventor watch over your shoulder? It is. This is, a, this is a private lesson for all of us. You keep all the end caps off at the, for that reason. Okay. That blew out a little bit there, but that's okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm excited. I'm going to put this one back in. Oh, that was tight. Okay, this one back in here. There. See what I mean about these? That, that's why it's so important that they go back in the same spot. These... These, these just haven't been moved, which is great. So if you've got a, a Gifkins jig, if you've got a Gifkins jig, uh, this, is, this is a tip that you needed to know. This is great. Okay. Um, it's probably, it could be need to a couple more clean up passes. All right. All right, we're going to turn the dust back on. You may want to turn the volume down a little bit again before I turn it all back on. We're just going to do some cleanup passes. Let's have a look. You know, it's lucky I stopped and had a quick test as I did. We're going live in a few weeks, Osman, and it will all be showing then. <laughs> He's going to start copying my videos. You watch. Here we go. Let's see what happens now. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's see if it's a nice push. Got to that stage. Let's have a look. What's it doing there? Duh! Oh, it was just catching. Look at that. Oh, I'm I'm stoked. That's. Look at that joint. Look at that. Can you see how nice it is? So as I was pushing it in, that was just magic. And that's a really nice joint. As I was pushing in, it was just catching on the edges. Of course, multiple pins going through. Now, Cole said last time that he was here to undo it. You sit it on the bench, like so, and then push down. And out, out it comes. Ha! I'm so excited. All right, now, that one back there. Let's keep going, keep going. Don't stuff up <laughs> while in your excitement and turn the bloody thing around the wrong way. Okay, I'm guessing it'll still be okay. You'll still be able to tidy it up, but man, oh man, how nice is that joint? What a jig, what a jig. Put this one in. Checking that I'm on the base correctly, and I am. This back on here. Isn't it beautiful? All right, Dusty back on. 
and go slowly. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish cutting it. Um, yeah, I'm exactly the same, Peter. Thanks, Retro. What I, I'm going to finish cutting it, and look, if you want to hang around, I'll glue it as well. I've got three more ends to do. I've got to do the pins on this one, and I've got to do the last set of pins on here. We'll put a bit of glue on, pull the clamp up, and uh, show a video from or a viewer's project, or we might leave it till next week. See how we go. that one I just had a nervous second there hoping I'd put it in the right way wouldn't that be terrible if you had the pins all the <laughs> facing the other direction on the opposite side has that ever happened to you Cole okay face mark again back to there put all that stuff in here and again crucial that the sides are parallel and all the same length in this particular situation. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to make some comment while I was doing that. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. Here we go. You, you want me to just keep on going? Okay, I will. Not telling. All right.
Excellent. Okay, this is the last lot. Let's see how it goes. I'm not closing anything off yet. Turn that off. <clears throat> Have a quick drink. That's excellent. That's excellent. Just reading that information. Right. Now, what I was going to say was, um, Cole will probably now, seeing I'm an expert, Cole will probably now want me to do all the shows for him um, while he and Pam go and drink coffee at the, at the shows, doing a test fit. Oh, that's just insanely easy. Uh, it's just that last little bit. I don't know why it's doing that. But there she goes. Look at that. So I'm confident enough now to... It's just the length of the joint. That's all. That's all it is. I'm confident enough now to put some tape on the back, put a bit of glue on and clamp it. Uh, always happy to help. Sounds like a plan to me. What do you think, Cole? <laughs> uh, you're reading your mind, Dave. Yep. It'll, I'll turn around this way so you guys can watch. I'm just putting a bit of tape down the inside. Like so. This is, this is going to be the part that's just so easy. Like that. Okay, I'm going to put another one at this end. So, Cole, are you at the beach at the moment, or are you actually at home watching? I get a little bit of the shakes. I'm excited about putting this joint together. This is beautiful. Okay, so that's one. And remember my system. I mark all the pieces as I'm going along. So my joints are going to be... <clears throat> a continuation of the board. And also, I did make comment that Australian Woodsmith magazine, which is where I'm getting all the details for this drum, say to do mitre joints. That is the... This is the inside here, where, where no marking is, correct? So away from the face mark. And the reason they say to use a mitre joint is because <clears throat> they want you to create a rebate through here, or rabbit in the States, to slide the soundboard up inside. Now I'm going to have to use a router 
and create that rebate inside the box when it's finished. And that's, but I wanted to do the, the joints because I just love learning a new way of doing stuff. You know, you've already been to the beach. Don't pay him too much. He's, <laughs> can you do Sydney for Cole and I can do Melbourne? <laughs> Funny. Cole's going to get a big head, scratch my ears. He won't be able to fit through the door. <laughs> scratch my ears like this. Ah, oh dear. Uh, now, Ben was making comment that he's got another kind of a jig and it's a pain in the bum to set up. And this is looking good. This, this, this is just looking magic. Very happy with this. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, all of those done. Obviously, my Patreon chat is going to be a little bit later today. So we'll still do that. We'll still do it. Whilst I've got uh, the mouse here, I'm going to go to this one here and mate rates. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the other thing from Matt Hall. Now, Matt is the guy who sent in the pictures of his desk that he did with all those beautiful Bessie clamps all over it. Look behind me. These guys, I love them. Um, and he says, some pics of the latest progress are attached. I finally got the three wall cabinets up. So let's see if I can find this picture here. So he's got the three wall cabinets up. Uh, they've only just been hung in the pics, so not fully leveled or tied together yet. No shelves or doors yet. As I'm working alone, I decided to use a French cleat as the mounting method, as it was then just a matter of hooking them on once the cleat was on the wall. All things I can do solo. I used high quality 18 millimeter ply to make the cleats on the wall. On the wall, a single piece was screwed onto the three studs that spans with two 14 gauge by 75 millimeter screws. Let's see if I can find this picture of the cleat. This is a French cleat. Um, by 75 millimeter screws into each stud. You might be able to spot one mistake where I measured the wrong way and missed the stud on the right, so I had to move over to the correct spot. Annoying little mistakes like that appears to be my specialty. You're not going to see it <laughs> though, Matt. It's going to be behind the cabinet. Uh, the cabinets, they're all separate, so three total were assembled using Domino's glue on the backs and also pocket holes. Let's go to the next picture. Uh, where all the weight is being held. In one of the pics, you can see how the wall cleat will pass through the notched backs, allowing each cabinet to be hung individually onto the single wall cleat. The cabinet cleats were glued on using type bond melamine, eight gauge 30 screws into the back of another couple of pocket holes into the sides, uh, and another couple of pocket holes into the sides. I have no idea if this is gonna be strong enough, but I hope so given they're above me. If I don't forward further progress pics in a couple of weeks, you can assume it wasn't strong enough. <laughs> Okay, um, I rarely get to watch the Sunday show live, but catch up within a day or so. In answer to your comment last week, yes, the little shelves on the front of the desk will be used to display items, example, 3D puzzles, cars, etc. And the desk is already a mess. Thanks again for your vids and advice. Regards, Matt. That's fantastic. If you've got projects like that, send them in. You know, I don't care if it's like Matt's there or like Jasmine's seat that she's made out in the garden. Send them in to me. Hi, Bink. How are you? There's another daughter dropped in. Um, send them in to me and uh, through the link in the video below, Dave Stanton Live, or it's Dave Stanton Fans at gmail.com. Um, not that I'm a head swell, <laughs> like Cole. Um, I, I, he's going to say, you're a cheeky bugger. Give me my jigs back. Uh, well, I've lost the plot. Um, not that I've, I'm a head swell. It's just that I didn't know any, I, you know, you make a, a name up for an email address and I thought, well, That'll do me. All right. Only a couple of minutes, Aussie man. All right. Now, let's do the glue up. Let's do the glue up. This is fun. I'm going to drop this down out of the way first because, and take this out. See that? Um, open the door up and lower this down. And the crank is here. That should be fine there. Because what would happen is I could possibly just, by mistake, pass my knuckles over the top of that and it would open me up. It's gone. Beautiful. 
Okay. That's <laughs> unkind. Um, is there a version of the jig with adjustable spacing? Seems like the next evolution to me. Uh, talk to Cole about all that stuff. I have no idea. Now remember, I've got to lay it all out again in the manner that I put it together. I'm not going to put a heap of glue on it. I'm going to use this stuff because it's really clear when it sets. One, two, three, four. And where's my glue brush? Now I'm going to use the spatula end of my brush. Can you see? And because it's a mechanical giant, it doesn't really need a lot of glue in there to hold it. Okay, that's one end. And I'm only going to do it... You know what? I'm an idiot. I'm an absolute idiot. Why don't I just do it on the pins? What do you think? Because then all I have to do is go like that, 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 and that. And then I can use the brush just to quickly hit it up. And get it in the bottom if I need to. Bottom of the joint there. Done. That was quicker. <laughs> Should have dry fitted first. Oh, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a thrill seeker, Cole. Let's just, let's just see how it goes. If it doesn't fit, it's going to be your fault. You know, you know that if it doesn't work. <laughs> what do you think of the quality of the video this week? It's uh, the color is, is really, really nice. It's come up so well. I spent a little bit more time adjusting it. This is going to work nicely. That's that one. Dripping glue all over the place here. Up you go. Now the glue can also be a little bit of lubrication for the joint as it's going together. You guys aren't going to believe me anymore when I start, start off by saying, I'm just going to use the spatula end and then I start using the, brick, the, the, uh, the brush. It's because I changed my mind, which I'm prone to do. You ask Vicky, she'll tell you. Oh, this is so nice. One left to do. Yeah, the picture quality is fantastic this week. Absolutely. Remember when I first started doing these streams and it was broadcasting at around 300 pixels or something across and oh, the frustration I was having with the National Broadband Network in Australia. But now it's going great for me. And I know it's not going great for a lot of other people. I can't help you. You know, it's just, it's, for me, it's fantastic. Done. All right. Here we go, Cole. Um, it will be split 50-50 chance. Okay, so B to B. So I'm going to flip this over and put that in there. Okay, so that's a C, B, and B. I'm going to hold it over the edge, and then I'm going to get the other one, C to C. And looking at the outside, yep, all of those facing down. Cool. And then put this fellow on top, and that's A to A. Dry fit, go away. Ah, no, there's just a slight twist in the board there, that's all that is. This end, see that? I pull it across a little. 
Done. Beautiful. Down she goes. And a clamp on it, because it's pulling both sides in at once. Let's see how we go with the clamp. One, and the other clamp. I'm just gonna pull it in slowly with the clamps. Release and go again. Put another clamp on this one here. The large Bessies, I can apply a little bit more pressure just till it comes in and then we'll stop. There she goes, it was just one catching. Can you, I'm, I'm gonna do it on the other camera so you can see what's happening. Okay, so as I'm tightening it up, you can see it's just grabbing here and there, that's all. There she goes. Beautiful. I'll take that one off there and then put another one at the other end. And turn it around so you can see what's happening. There she goes, that one's all nice. This one's starting to, it's catching down the bottom there a touch. Flip her upside down. Up the other way, put this one on. There she goes. That might have been the first one we did, Cole. Beautiful. And the bottom. There she goes. Magic. Clamps off. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now I'm going to put these ones back on. Just to hold it steady. And move this one out of the way. All the way up to the, all the way to the bottom of the clamp's reach. And I think... We're going to check it for square, is the last thing. So give me a sec, I'll grab my square. Where has it gone? Of course, oh, I'll just grab this one, this will do. All right. <laughs> I gotta show you. Look, I'm gonna sit that down there. Look at that. How good is that? How good is that? All right. Um, I don't even know if I need to worry about anything. That needs a little push there. That's fine. Just checking over the whole thing. That's all nice there. I'm going to give it a quick clean with a rag. and see what you reckon. I've used paper towels, so it's going all over the place. And the, oh, the tops, they're magic. I could have used a rubber mallet, yeah, but I didn't. Beautiful. 
Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That, that's going to be fine. Now, inside, can you see why well, I put the tape there? Just here. The squeeze out on the inside. When this all dries, I'll peel that tape off. And that'll be that. So we're going to hook into all of this next week. I'm sorry I've gone over time. Let's go back over to here. <clears throat> Very exciting. Okay, could you have used a rubber mallet to tap the joint together? No need. Uh, Bianca, that's not bad. <laughs> could have used your sleeve. I, I don't know. Um, let me see, what am I up to? I'm going to read these things here to make sure it's all good. Tongue drum, dovetails, joints, jazz's seat, and that stuff. Um, thank you very much to all of my patrons who support me to keep the, bringing this show to you. One of the things that they all saw last week as well was this that I made. I've started doing inlay in foam. So it's on a backing board. This goes in one of my drawers. So this holds all of my dogs. Perfect fit. Um, screwdrivers all recessed out black shadow in the bottom. I am going to make some more, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with black on the top and a blue shadow board underneath. And for things like this, I'll put finger grabs on either side. How nice is that? And also, um, Amana Tools are sending me over some foam cutters for the CNC, which will be fantastic. They're six inches long, quarter inch, they're designed for working with foam only. They're not designed for wood. <laughs> Just be aware of that. Oh, you want those for kitchen drawer inserts, do you? Or your makeup drawer insert? Well, look, we possibly could do. So next week on the show, we will... I'll probably sand this during the week. You don't really need to watch that part. I'll sand it all up. And then I'll set it up to create the rebate in the base. We might make the soundboard and start doing the actual finger, the tongues on the, on the board at the top. It could be fun. So as I say every week, no, before I say, do that, I'm going to say thank you to my patrons. This is at a certain level. You'll notice also with Patreon, what I do is um, I, at different levels, you'll get different amounts of viewing on the Patreon site for the $1, $2 and $5. Basically, you won't really see any much more than the public sees, but you know, it's a, it's a way, it's, it helps me out. $10, yeah, you get to see what's coming up, 20 and 25 and $50 if you want to. They're, they're just for um, more contact with me. I don't advertise what it's there for because they've got this method where they want to start taxing on anything that I talk to you about, which is just crazy. So. There we go. The, my patrons are Johannes Moa, John Parra, Vincent Nyang, John Lafferty in the hospital again, I think, Peter Woolworth, Brian Del Vecchio, Justin Bailey, Brett Guthrie, Mike Diem, Wayne Cargill, Matthew Raphael, or Raphael, John Lynch, and Peter Partridge. Thank you so much to those people for doing what you do. It's very, very um, generous of you. Thank you again. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other. And I shall see you all next week. Bye.